Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another thing where I talk about things. Today we're going to be talking about Fallout 4. We're also probably going to hear a little dog uh, begging and crying at the door. Uh, she's really antsy today, so she's got her little ball, she's been squeaking it. I've tried to record this thing three times and have uh, not been able to, so for now, she's going to be outside. We're, we're going to probably hear it. But anyway though, Fallout 4. I know I talked about Fallout recently, and uh, I talked a little bit about Fallout 4 and how I was like, yeah, you know, it really didn't appeal to me that much while I was playing it. But uh, <clears throat> I hadn't really completed the game or gone through the story mode, and I hadn't really seen exactly why so many people were down on the game. Like, I'd seen people say that the game was just unsalvageable, and uh, I didn't really see that based on what I played. Like, I acknowledged that I hadn't done the settlement stuff, you know, so I hadn't tapped into that, and apparently that was a big part of the game. Uh, I hadn't even done the mission with the Minutemen, where you had to go and get your power armor and everything like that. So, you know, there may have been a lot of potential stuff that I was missing out on, who knows? Uh, but little did I realize that where I ended that Let's Play that I was doing, you know, it wasn't really all that popular of a Let's Play, so uh, probably a lot of people didn't see it, but uh, where I ended that, you know, having been meandering around and not really doing anything too productive, uh, it turns out that I had already reached the endgame content and was pretty much done, uh, except for to run through the story. Because uh, as it turns out, Fallout 4 was really weird in the, in the way that it set up its weapons. It's, it's like you don't really get... Uh, better weapons, you know, you don't really like, go to merchants, merchants are barely a thing, towns are barely a thing, there's barely any civilization anywhere. Uh, you know, you just kind of get, like, a shotgun or whatever, and then you mod the shotgun using junk that you pick up off the floor and whatever perks you level up into. <clears throat> so there was virtually uh, uh, nothing more to me, nothing more for me to do as far as equipment went. Uh, throughout the rest of that game, I really barely swapped anything out, and it just kind of shocked me. I was just sort of like, oh, I didn't realize that this pipe pistol was always going to be sort of, like, close to good enough. It's kind of like finding out, like, the Silence 22 pistol or whatever in New Vegas. Like, it's just this awful pistol. You can't do anything with it. You really have to swap it out. That's what I thought the pipe pistols were supposed to be like, but then I realized that, you know, Every enemy in the entire game had this ammo on him, and so the pipe pistol, once I upgraded it all the way, it wasn't like my best gun, but it passed, you know, it was good enough. So, uh, you know, and it also had tons of ammo, and I could load it up with like a magazine that carried some 40 bullets or whatever. Some insane thing. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, that, was, that was kind of an amazing letdown, but that wasn't really the part that really dragged the game down. I mean, that was kind of a drag, but what really ruined the game was the story, which I hadn't even gotten into. Um, I started playing the game again, and I went through, and what I had been doing was uh, I intentionally skipped the Minutemen thing, because I knew that they were going to try and force feed me power armor, which I really didn't like. I view power armor as like a late game kind of thing, a lot of people do, and uh, I just didn't want it. So I went on and I found like the Brotherhood of Steel, and I thought, okay, I'll do some missions for the Brotherhood of Steel, and gradually I'll kind of work my way up through the ranks, and the story will progress through the Brotherhood of Steel, and that will be interesting. So I did all the missions for Dance, and they started assigning me Radiant quests to do. And at first I didn't realize they were Radiant quests, but like after the second time, like you complete one and then you come back and they're like, well, I've got more work for you. And I'm like, oh, cool, uh, cool, shoot, tell me what it is. And they're like, I want you to do the same thing you just did. And I realized like, oh, these are Radiant Quests, but I had a quest to do the Radiant Quests, which I thought was odd. I thought that was maybe a little bit lazy, that they would introduce these NPCs that would just be like, go and fetch the sword from, you know, the altar of, of um, Boston. And, uh, and so, like, you would just do that over and over again, and uh, once you did enough of them, then you would move through the story. And... Uh, you know, like, that that by itself was kind of like, I was like, oh, okay, so, I mean, like, they didn't have enough time to put content in the game. I mean, all right. Like, I don't know, maybe they thought that, like, modders would add enough story material after release to make up for it. But I thought that was really disappointing because uh, in my, my feeling is that one of the big things that you buy these games for is for all the little quests and stuff like that that the developers put in the game for you to do. I mean, like, the game by itself is sort of like a core to work with, but it's not like Minecraft, you know? Uh, but I feel like they were also trying to sort of make it Minecraft with all the, with all the base building. But, uh, yeah, so this was like the first red flag when I was like, oh, okay, so Radiant Quests, and I have like a main quest line mission to do these Radiant Quests? That's, that's weird. Uh, so, 
Yeah, uh, I did that, and so I was kind of like just screwing around, and I was like, yeah, I, I can't, like, none of these guys are giving me any more quests to advance the story. Like, what do I do, guys? I was talking to some of my friends. I was like, well, what do I do? And they're like, well, did you do the Minuteman quest? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, well, you have to do the Minutemen quest, because otherwise the story won't advance. And I, I was just like, oh. So, like, the game just doesn't advance unless you help the Minutemen. Like, well, what if you went around that town and you never thought to go back? Like, you'd go through the entire game with, with basically zero leads and zero information. So, um, so, yes, you have to go back and do the Minuteman quest, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can just skip ahead to Diamond City or whatever. Um, but I... I went back and I did the Minuteman quest, and then uh, I had to be directed. They were like, well, maybe you should go to Diamond City and ask about Sean there. Uh, Sean being your son who's kidnapped, you know. Which, again, a lot of people were upset that the game sort of railroaded you into, you know, oh, you're this guy and you do this, and, and it's very strict about who you are, so there's not a lot of role playing. Um, but I kind of I kind of learned quickly on as I started to progress through the game that uh, you really don't do any role playing. Almost everything that they had, like it, they weren't joking. They aren't joking. I mean, they they're joking. They're making fun of it, but they're not wrong when they say that every single speech option is some variant of yes or I'll come back later, because every single speech variant I got was some kind of variant on yes or I'll come back later. So, uh, so yeah, so the game sends me along to Diamond City, where, for whatever reason, like, I go in there and I'm like, Oh, have you seen my son, Sean? Have you seen my son, Sean? And everyone's like, go ask the detective. So I was like, yeah, okay, and so I go to talk to the detective, and she's like, Oh, the detective isn't here right now, but, um, I know where he is if you want to go rescue him. And, uh, and I was like, oh, what? Like, at this point, I was, I was already kind of skipping through dialogue because the voice acting was not very good and the pacing of it was really slow. So it was kind of like, hello, welcome to Diamond City. I would like to tell you about my numerous fruit basket sales options. Would you like to be interested in buying a fruit basket? And so if you listen to the entire di dialogue, it was pretty dull. And uh, so I was starting to kind of like skip ahead. Like once I got the gist of what they were telling me, I would just like click to move on. I'd be like, all right, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not really entirely sure uh, a lot of times why certain things were happening. And you could say like, oh, Greg, how could you skip through all the dialogue and then, you know, bash the game for having a bad story. But, um, you know, uh, this is one of these things where it really kind of depends. Like your actions as the player can really impact the way you perceive the main character and the world in general. Like, I guess if you were really invested in this really slow voice acting, uh, maybe it was a different game for you. But, but like, I had this with Final Fantasy VII, I remember, where people were like, oh, yeah, no, like, Cloud, Cloud from Final Fantasy VII is so stoic and so badass. Except as a player character, you get to choose how Cloud would always respond to things. And I always made him respond like the most petty little, like, pissant like 12 year old every single time that I got an opportunity so to me Cloud was this pissy little 12 year old and I was like he's not badass he's kind of a dick he's kind of a like a he's like a little kid and everyone should probably <laughs> you know the best thing to happen in that game was when he lost control of the party for a while so um you know like my experience was just kind of like man this is a uh, uh really stupid everything is really stupid but apparently i'm not at all alone in this in this feeling so anyway though so she's like yeah the detective is gone but if you'd like to go rescue him from some people then uh, sure go feel free to do that and so I was just like, oh, all right, so I'll just get a lead on where the detective is. And then once I track down the detective, the detective will help me track down Sean. I mean, realistically, I could actually invest this time hunting for the detective in hunting for Sean. But okay, yeah, all right. And so you go out of your way to like go, go to this uh, uh, place. I can't even remember where it is because it wasn't really like significant in any way. Like everything kind of blurred together. Most of the town was just sort of like, uh, you know, dungeon crawls or whatever. You go into a room, you kill all the baddies, you steal the treasure at the end of the, at the, end of the room, uh, at the end of the dungeon, and then you go back. And that's, you know, there's, there's really not very much in most of them. Uh, there is an exception to this. There's one called the Dunwich Borers, which had kind of an interesting thing going on. You had these little flashbacks, flashbacks and uh, there's like a sword at the end of it, it's like a powerful melee weapon but i wasn't spec for melee so it wasn't really very useful for me but uh you know there was at least one interesting area in fallout 4 like one one spot that was kind of neat um 
I mean, there was maybe like one or two other places that I was like, oh, cool, and I was kind of glad that I found, but for the most part, everything was pretty boring. So, um, so yeah, so I went someplace, some interchangeable location where I had to go through the layers of the dungeon, and uh, the place was occupied, I think it was like a subway area or something like that, and... Um, yeah, like like there were just a bunch of guys, like a bunch of like old timey gangsters, and uh, and I I like you couldn't even interact with them. Like you couldn't go down there and be like, hey guys, like what's going on? Like and I, I got through this a lot where I was getting into um, oh that's right that's why I started clicking through and I stopped I stopped kind of cooperating with the game because I was finding that as I was encountering people, like I would frequently try to approach them to see like oh are you hostile? And uh, a lot of times, you know, it wouldn't be immediately obvious that they might be hostile. But uh, even if they didn't shoot you on sight, many times they would enter a dialogue session where if you chose the wrong dialogue, they would become hostile. And uh, pretty much the only way to not make them hostile was with like persuasion skills, which I hadn't invested perks in because the game works based on perks rather than on skills. So it's kind of like, you know, I could invest in guns, which is more important, or I could invest in speech. And to be honest, most most people aren't worth talking to. Uh, like when I was doing the Brotherhood of Steel mission, I walked up to these like these gunners, not realizing that gunners is actually just another way, another cute word for raiders, uh, because you see the gunners repeatedly, <clears throat> and all they ever did was just shoot me on sight. I never was. I was able to speak to them once, and they were like, "Hey, give me 500 bottle caps," and I was like, "That's a lot of caps." And they were like, "Yeah," and I was like, "I'll just turn around and go the other way," and they're like, "No, because now we're gonna kill you." So I just reloaded the game and I just shot them with sniper rifles and I was like, well, the dialogue was pointless because, you know, I mean, all I could do was barter down the cost of traveling through this area. So, um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, anyway, these guys, like, I approached them and then they shot at me. And so I said to myself, all right, well, I'm not doing that again. And I started to get into this habit of not approaching NPCs to talk to them, but rather just shooting at them from a great distance because that minimized the risk to me. Uh, when I got up close, they had a chance to shoot at me, and if I didn't get up close, like if I didn't enter the dialogue wheel with them, then they had no chance to attack me. And this was especially frustrating too, because Fallout 4 still follows the rule where if a NPC is programmed to walk up to you and start conversation, it doesn't matter if they can't see you or if they don't know you're there, they'll still walk to where you're hiding and start a conversation with you. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's much better to just shoot everyone from a distance and assume that they're hostile, because 90% of the time, they are hostile. So, yeah, so I just go through the subway, killing these, like, random guys I know nothing about. I don't know who they are, or what their deal is, or why they've kidnapped a detective. But I find this detective, and he's a, he's a synth. He's a robot. You know, his, his skin is all torn up and tattered, and you can see the gears and mechanisms underneath. And I thought, well, that was weird, because everyone's really paranoid about synths. And so I thought, like, oh, am I going to be the bad guy if I let this guy go? Like, am I going to get in trouble? And, because uh, no one mentions to you that he's a synth on your way down there. No one's like, yeah, he's a synth. And Or if they did, I just didn't pay attention, and it's my fault. But but I'm not, I don't feel like they told you that he was a synth. And, uh... And I feel like that should have been something that would be really important, like, up front, just to let you know, he's, he's, he's a robot. And it's okay if you rescue him, everyone here in Diamond City is cool with that. I mean, not everyone, but, you know, enough people are fine with it that you won't be a pariah. So, um, so yeah, so I, I met the guy and I was just like, oh, uh, like, uh, hi, am I supposed to cooperate with you or whatever? And uh, it turns out he was a pretty nice guy, so I, I guess I was supposed to cooperate with him. I don't know if I could kill him or not. Um, I didn't try to kill him because he was behind a, a glass wall, so I couldn't kill him until I until I <laughs> advanced that quest a little further. Um, so so you know he he established communication and established that he didn't have intent to harm me before I shot him. And uh, uh, yeah, I just kind of followed him back to Diamond City. Um, before we got back, we were ambushed by like a crime boss of some sort. I, I don't know who he was or what he was all about. I don't know if the game told you. But one way or the other, you know, he wasn't really significant. It wasn't like he was doing anything. I mean, like, they were all just in a subway. They weren't, like, established as, as being important to the story. Um, they did have, like, a crime lord who got established, but he didn't seem to do anything. Or at least I didn't interact with him in a way that caused him to do anything. So, yeah, this, I don't know, this crime boss showed up, and he's just like, Ah, sep 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 And I actually just, like, walked past him. Because uh, cause I didn't really care about the conversation. They were like, oh, Steve, Steve Wimbleman, you're going to die. And I was like, uh, uh, I'm angry because of the socks. Like, I have really itchy socks. And I'm so mad. 
And uh, and so I just like started to walk past them. Like I was like in sneak mode, and I was like, oh well, you know they they don't know where I am if I get over here in this shadow. So I went over in the shadow. Sure enough, they couldn't see me. I went into hidden mode, and then I just kept walking right past them. And the game didn't like the game was programmed to then have them go hostile once I got a certain distance away from them. But uh, like functionally, I was gone. Like they didn't know where I had gone to. I was just like I'm just gonna go over here and then crouch down. And they were like, but. He's gone. He's gone. So uh, I killed them all from hiding, and then, you know, we went back to town. And they were like, oh, we have to find this Kellogg guy. And uh, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. They were like, yeah, because Kellogg works for the Institute. So if anyone knows where your son Sean is, it's Kellogg. So, um, yeah, we, we have to, like, break into the, um, break into Kellogg's house. And uh, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it, which is which is good. At least they gave you some options, but I couldn't actually accomplish any of them really, except for the one, and that was pickpocketing the key to the place. And I don't know why, but the mayor for some reason had a key to Kellogg's house, and only the mayor had it. So I had to like go to the mayor's office of of uh, Diamond City and be like, "Hey, uh, can I get into Kellogg's house?" And he's like, "Why?" And I failed all my speech checks, and so he's just like, "Go away." Uh, like I tried to bribe him and everything and it's just like, just like go away and so then I just like saved the game and because uh, pickpocketing is RNG based you know the first time I pickpocketed the key from him he turned hostile and tried to kill me I should have just killed him I, I feel like it probably wouldn't have mattered if I just killed the mayor but uh, <laughs> um, you know I, I reloaded the game and then pickpocketed again and this this time RNG smiled upon me and uh, I got the key so I went back to Kellogg's house and um, this is where the game got really stupid, was we got in there and we were like, oh, Kellogg's not here. I know, I'll use my dog to smell where Kellogg went. So we like got some cigars from his room and we just had like my dog follow the trail to Kellogg. And, and you have to think of like, how long ago was it that Kellogg must have left and, and all this stuff. And you're just like, you're just like moving and you're moving and you're moving. And uh, a couple of times it got really frustrating because the dog would like take me places and then like there was one point where he just like stood in a doorway and refused to move. So like you have to follow your AI, your, your stupid NPC, and, uh, and the AI is so bad that like they can actually block you into rooms permanently. And I thought that Bethesda had learned not to do this from Skyrim because in Skyrim when you run at an NPC they back up and they give you, they give you crap about it, they're like oh don't do that. But in Fallout 4, they don't move. They just hold perfectly still, and like, they're just like, oh, like, I'm sorry, did you want to go through me? Too bad. In fact, they're prompted to turn and face you, because I think they're programmed to think that you're, you're trying to have a conversation with them if you get close. So it makes it worse. It actually makes them more likely to stand in your way. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm just like, the dog is just there in this hallway, he's just there in this doorway. And, uh, you know, he won't move, and the game is acting like I'm supposed to do something. But, uh, it's not indicating, like, what exactly I'm looking for, because, like, really, what am I looking for? Like, what exactly is the dog, like, the dog is just following the smell of a cigar? Like, I don't even think that German Shepherds are really the kind of dogs that you would use for this sort of long-range tracking. I think that you would use, I think German Shepherds might be more like sight hounds. I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure, well, they do drug sniffing, I guess. I don't know. Like, I don't know, I just don't know, I, I, I don't know, like, German Shepherd, I, like, I would understand maybe a Bloodhound or something like that, but, 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 uh, I don't, yeah, I, don't, I just don't know if a dog can actually track that long, but, like, occasionally it would just change what you were looking for for a scent, like, first it was cigars, and I was like, okay, so I'm just looking at a cigar at every spot that the dog stops, but then it changed it and became, like, bloody rags and stuff like that, and it's like, okay, boy, Look for the smell of blood out here in the apocalyptic wasteland where everything's killing everything else. But he was able to just follow this trail of blood, you know, the scent of blood all the way to somewhere else. So, you know, cigars made more sense than the blood, but but all right, here we go. So, um, so yeah, so I just followed the dog and, and eventually like what wound up happening was uh, uh, I think that there was like a bloody cloth on a pipe in that room or something like that. And it took me forever to find it. I almost gave up and quit the game right then and there because I was just like, where's the, where's the trinket that I'm supposed to be looking for? Like, where's the little thing that'll advance this? You know, I can't get to move dog meat. Damn it. You're worthless animal. And, uh, and so, yes, uh, uh. Yeah, I, I finally found the cloth and we moved along and it turned out that Kellogg was in a building. You know, just some completely random building. It, there wasn't any significance to the building, it was just like a building that he was in. 
Uh, I don't know if they ever tell you the significance of the building. It was just like the ruins of uh, of some office or something like that. So you go in and you you like there's like synths everywhere, and the entire time Kellogg is on the radio. Even though I was sneaking the whole way through, he was communicating with me because he could see me with his omniscient uh, story sense. And so he's just like, "Oh, you're so dumb. Like I can't believe you made it. Like you're so dumb. You're going to die. You're going to die." And then finally you get to the end and he's like, I can't believe you made it this far. All right, let's talk, buddy. And I'd been burned by NPCs enough times in a row that I didn't really want to enter a dialogue with Kellogg. Like, I really wasn't interested in in what Fallout 4 had written because so far most of it had been pretty dull and a kind of a big letdown. So, uh, so Kellogg comes out with his hands up and he's like, oh, I'm not going to shoot. So I just shot his head off. Because I don't want to negotiate with Kellogg. Like, forget it. Like, what are you? You're an NPC in Fallout 4. The only thing you could say would be something dumb. So I shot him. I shot him. And that pretty much started a... Uh, uh, that was that was when I started realizing that killing the NPCs in the story mission was actually making things progress faster than, <laughs> than had I, had I uh, uh, not done it. And so I just, like, left his corpse there. He had junk on him. But again, by this point, I started to realize that there were no merchants in Fallout 4, really. And everything I need, need, needed could be scavenged. So I kind of looked him over and I was like, oh, cybernetic brain, cybernetic arm. Like, all right, are these weapons that are better than the weapons I have? No. Is it ammunition? Can I eat it? Is it purified water? No, no, none of these things. So I just like left it, you know, thinking like, well, you know, it looks like I could sell it. Like these are, these are loot items for me to sell. And I didn't really care about the caps. I don't think I, after... After I realized that I really didn't need to buy equipment, I don't think I ever talked to merchants again. I would just dump equipment when I got too much of it. Uh, most of what I had to collect was modding uh, a scrap for the settlements later on, but that was that was a little bit later. I avoided the settlement thing for as long as I could. So, um, so yeah, so I go back to Diamond City and I'm like, Nick, I murdered Kellogg. And they were like, oh. Well, that's not good. How are you going to get into the Institute now, buddy? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really care about Sean. <laughs> Honestly, as the player, I really don't care. Like, what do we do next? Like, what's next on our quest list? And he's like, well, I guess if you go and you collect the cybernetic brain uh, of Kellogg, we could plug his brain into a machine. And, and I was like, oh. Oh, is that why we had the cybernetic brain item on Kellogg? Okay, so I had to go all the way back to the office block, collect the brain from, from Kellogg, and then bring it back. Oh, right, and then the Brotherhood of Steel showed up. That was the other thing that happened, was the Brotherhood of Steel showed up, and uh, they were, you know, they came in this, this big uh, airship. And I gotta give Fallout 4 credit, the airship was pretty cool. Like, the, it's got these, like, levers, these arms that, like... Uh, hold the uh, vertebrates and so it like launches vertebrates you know and it's it's actually pretty cool it's, it's it was a good entrance for that thing um, a shame that I couldn't have seen it you know by just following the Brotherhood of Steel as their own quest line as opposed to having to go down this sort of um, stupid like I want my son back thing but um, yeah you know it was it was pretty great and I was like ah cool that's really cool like I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed by that one you know I'll give some points to Fallout for here uh, so you know Points to Fallout 4 for the cool for the Pridwin being kind of awesome, but uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, though, so Nick was just like, "Yeah, go back and get the brain," and I went and I got I got the brain, and then I had to go to this place where they made me sit through the dialogue, and uh, man, like that really wore my patience. Then when they were just like, "Yeah." You have to listen to this like long these long winded exchanges. Like you had to go through the memories of. Um, uh, uh, shoot, what's a cell? Uh, what, Kellogg. You have to go through Kellogg's memories, and he's just like, yeah, I'm Kellogg. I have a troubled past. My soul is troubled. You know, I shot people. I didn't deserve to have a kid. I was, was a, a scary man. This is a, this is a Blade Runner robot. Here he is. Here, Blade Runner robot. So you had to, like, examine each of these things to, like, get the memory, and you had to listen to the dialogue, and da 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 da, da and it was super boring, and there was Sean. And, like, Sean doesn't express himself as a person in the memory he's just like sitting on the floor doing nothing just being like hi i'm sean hello it's me now i'm going i'm leaving i'm leaving with the institute dad will never find me so yeah uh he's already like 10 years old or whatever in this flashback you know he already doesn't know who you are like he's grown up without you in his life so uh yeah you're just like oh um it turns out you have to teleport to get into the institute everyone's like oh gosh teleporting how could we do that? 
Oh wait, I know, there's like a doctor who escaped from the institute, I bet he knows how to teleport. All you have to do is go into the irradiated sea, and uh, or the glowing sea, where the nuclear bomb hit and there's still lots of radiation. And then you go and you talk to him and he'll, he'll tell you how to teleport. So, um, I did that, I went down to the glowing sea. And, uh, and, and there was, there was some cool stuff there, like, uh, I ran into a, this, this church, like, I, there was, like, a, a rooftop, and I was just trying to climb up over it, and I accidentally fell down in the church, and it was, like, full of ghouls, which was kind of neat, I mean, like, it's just a, it's just sort of an accidental thing to, like, literally stumble into, that was kind of fun, because uh, then I was, like, surrounded by zombies and trying not to get my brains eaten, and, uh, you know, so that was, that was all right, that was, that was kind of neat. Um, you know, the atmosphere was sort of cool, but as I was running along, I was apparently, uh, building up a parade of rad scorpions, and I didn't realize how they worked, because the way that rad scorpions work in Fallout 4 is that they burrow, and apparently they can travel very quickly while they're underground. I thought to myself, like, yes, once you're burrowed underground, you're not moving very fast, right? So, like, these, these scorpions would pop up out of the ground, and then they're programmed to just go underground randomly. So they'd pop up, they would follow me for a while, and then go underground. And I thought like, oh, okay, so they're underground, that means they're not moving, because for them to be able to burrow as fast as I could walk would be insane. So, um, so like, I just assume, like, oh, if I just keep walking, then pretty soon the rad scorpions will all be left behind. Not true. Not true. It turns out that rad scorpions followed me all the way to the Church of Adam. Yeah, you know that, that uh, thing from Fallout 4 where everyone was worshipping a nuclear bomb in Megaton? Well, for whatever reason, this made, it way, it's, it made its way out to Boston. And then they go to the ground zero of like an exploded nuclear bomb. And they were all living there in like this constant radiation. And they had no way to survive there. And even weirder, they were, they were all armed with guns that did radiation damage. This proved to be a fatal mistake on their part because as I walked up to talk to their leader, uh, their leader started the conversation with me and then she broke out of conversation when the parade of scorpions that I had brought with me popped up out of the ground and slaughtered everyone. There were no survivors. Like, I just kind of, like, watched it all happen, and I was like, all right, so you've got all these people living out here in radiation where, you know, they have no business surviving because none of them have any resistance to radiation. In fact, they're embracing the idea of radiation poisoning. And then they're all armed with weapons that can't fight the local fauna because rat scorpions are immune to radiation damage, and all their guns did, the only thing their guns did, was radiation damage. So they were totally helpless. Rad scorpions wiped out the entire town, and it was it was my fault, but I didn't do anything to cause it. So um, I think that this this might have triggered the Church of Adam to be hostile towards me, because later on I saw some of their members in town, like in Boston, and they were they were hostile towards me. I, I don't know why. Like I didn't really like I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. Like the rad scorpions probably should have killed them years ago. I don't know why it had to be me that that triggered this. But uh, but yeah, I was just like, well, this was just about the dumbest possible thing. Like how in the heck is there a civilization of these idiots living out in the radiation, all armed with guns that can't defeat the local fauna? Like what are they doing? Like how were they living? Like how was I? How am I supposed to believe this? Like. The Fallout universe is kind of schmaltzy, it's sort of that Atomic Age B-movie schlock, but this was above and beyond, we're getting into like Plan 9 from Outer Space kind of stupidity, where you just can't suspend your disbelief. Like, you look at that and you say, this is too dumb. Like, it's just not possible. So, uh, yeah, that was just too stupid, and, uh, and I was just like, oh my god. Like, oh my god, Fallout 4, Fallout 4 what are you doing? So I kept moving, and uh, and I met my first and only, uh, well, I guess the second Deathclaw. The first one I didn't really count because he fell into a hole, and I just shot him from the hole. But I met my second Deathclaw, uh, who it turns out was vulnerable to a shotgun. I actually just stood there point blank and shot him until he was dead. I don't know what, what uh, mode of the game I was on, but I just know that this Deathclaw really didn't stand a chance. Uh, shotgun beats Deathclaw. So uh, then I went into the, the hole where this doctor was living, and he was a super mutant, you know, an intelligent super mutant. He's like, oh, I've learned how to cure being a super mutant. So if, if you agree to go get my research materials, I'll agree to help you build a teleporter that will take you to the Institute. And I was like, yeah, okay. And I had to do some kind of quest for him. I don't remember what it was. It was some trivial thing. Go here, collect the item, come back. It was basically like a radiant quest, but, you know, with the set location, I'm pretty sure. Um, whatever it was. It was trivial enough. Oh, no, 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 he wanted me to go fight a courser. That was like their, um, the Institute's, uh, 
special assassin bots. And so, um, so I go to find this courser, and uh, and like I said, I think there was some other stuff in the way, but it just felt like Radiant Quest. I can't remember. It's it's very foggy. What else he had me do besides this courser thing? I know I had to visit him a couple of times, but um, yeah. So I go to find this courser, and like you find him, and it turns out that he's in like this building where there's like three floors of mercenaries and he's like killing all of them single-handedly. And so you work your way through all this, also fighting mercenaries on your end, until you get to the courser and then the courser is programmed to just walk up to you. So I wasn't able to get the drop on him. He just walks up to me and he's like, what are you doing? And uh, you know, he was killing everyone else on site, but for whatever reason, he's compelled to have a conversation with me. So he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm here to get the thing in your brain. And he's like, well, that's not okay. And I was like, well, then we have to duel to the death then. So we, you know, there, like I say, there, there wasn't really any conversation option, I don't think, to cooperate with him. It really was just kind of like, hello, I'm here to shoot you in the head. So, um, so yeah, I got in a fight with him, and he was really frustrating. I mean, like, he wasn't that amazing. It's just that he had a stealth boy. So he turned invisible, and that made it a lot harder to see where he was. So I was just kind of, like, chugging stim packs. Like, he would shoot me for a while, and I, like, I was just holding still, because... Yeah, you know, I mean, like, it didn't matter. Like, I was just holding still, he was shooting me with lasers, and I took a stim pack, and then, like, shoot it where I thought he was, and eventually he died. You know, that was the big climactic battle with the with the courser. And, uh, so, yeah, so I met this, like, synth girl, and she was like, I'm a synth, but I want to be free and live. And I was just like, all right, bye. I'm like, I don't know who you are, I don't care. I'm not really here for you, I'm here for the courser. So I just, like, let her go. That didn't amount to anything. That wasn't significant in any way. She didn't even leave the building. She wasn't even programmed to leave the building. She wasn't programmed to like run out of the building. She's just like, I'll see if I can scrounge up some supplies. And I was like, well, there's like tons of dead bodies. I'm pretty sure that you could be armed well enough to survive all of Fallout 4 with the equipment that's here. I mean, all you really need is a pipe pistol. That's where all the ammo is. So, uh, so you know, like, I was just like, eh, uh, just, eh. so, so yeah, so uh, I went back and they were like, all right, so, to understand the Courser brain, what you're gonna need to do is uh, is um, take it to the Underground Railroad. These people who rescue synths for whatever reason, even though synths, for unclear reasons, are killing and replacing people. So, um, you know, that's that's like a really scary thing. I don't see why you'd have a group that specifically wants to protect synths when they're like killing and replacing human beings, but okay. You know, so I have to go down there and there's like the Underground Railroad and there's this little puzzle that's like, uh, uh, you know, 7A and you find all of it and I was kind of like, you know, following this path and I accidentally stepped into the Swan Lake which summoned a giant super mutant who I killed and then he was carrying some piece of equipment that I didn't care about because, you know, I, I wasn't spec for melee. And, uh, you know, it was like, it's like every time I found something cool, it dropped some kind of item that I couldn't use. So it's just like, ah, oh, well that was cool. Shame it didn't pan out to be anything meaningful, but that was cool. So, um, yeah, Swan was kind of cool. A little funny. You step into Swan Lake and you get attacked by a giant super mutant. So, uh, so yeah, I got down to the, the Underground Railroad, uh, like, door. And the puzzle is, like, you have to spell out the words. And I knew this was happening. I knew that, like, oh, I was going to have to get a pad and a piece of paper. But, uh, you know, I was kind of not having... I was just a little bit tired of Fallout 4 as crap. So I just looked it up online. Apparently you have to spell out the, world, the word Railroad. And so I spell out the word railroad and I open the door and everyone is standing there waiting for me, like guns drawn, minigun prepared, and they just are so insanely rude and just completely condescending with you. Like they just jerked me around and they were they were not polite at all. Like I was like, hi, my name is is Big Sailorman. I'm here to deliver you guys a courser chip. And they're like, oh, a courser chip? Like, what are you? Some kind of, are you, are you with, are you like a gay? Are you a gay person? And, uh, you know, it's like, well, I don't feel like my sexuality should really come into this. This is, you know, come on, we're so far in the future. We shouldn't be using this. We shouldn't be using these kinds of, okay. So they didn't call me gay, but they did, they did, they did, they did just, I don't know. They were just insulting in this like really petty way. And, uh, and so like, there was a guy who defended me, but he comes across as like a joke character, so his defense didn't feel genuine, really. And so then I get down there, they're like, all right, we'll tolerate your presence here. And so you get down there and you're like, so I've got this courser chip. And they're like, a courser? Like, you killed a courser? Like, well, big whoop, you know, way to go. Way to go, Flash Gordon, savior of the universe. Like, uh, 
I can't believe you brought your chip down here. What do you want, a prize? And I was like, well, I was hoping that you guys would help me. <laughs> I was told you could unencrypt the file. And they were like, I guess we could, stupid. But, you know, you're going to have to give us the chip afterward. You know, that's the price. You have to pay us in this by giving us this chip. And I had the option. I was like, well, like, this is a really valuable piece of technology. Why should I just give it up? Like, I was able to ask them. And then they strong armed me. They were like, well, if you don't want to do it, we won't tell you what's on the chip. And, uh, and I was just like, the thing that I killed to get this chip wiped out three floors of armed mercenaries. Like, what does that tell you about me? and what I went through to get this chip. And then you're just gonna like strong arm me. Like I was thinking about New Vegas, you know, you get to, uh, you can get to Mr. House with the golden chip and he pays you 2000 caps and then promises you more work in the future. And is like, hey, you're really good. Like, let's be partners, you know? When you get to Kaiser's fort, uh, Kaiser tries to enlist you to help his legion. You know, the, the NCR tries to help you. Everyone wants your help because everyone in that game kind of recognizes that you're crazy dangerous. But this like underground railroad, like, like, like they even acknowledge it. They're like, this dude killed a courser. And like they point out like, oh, that's a big deal. And then they still strong arm you. They're like, oh, you know, it's our way or the highway. And so my options really were like, yes, 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 I'll come back later. So I was like, okay, yeah, you can just take the chip. Durr. And I wasn't happy with that as a player. I felt like I was getting screwed. Like they were, they were leveraging me specifically because the game programmed one option. And so they were just like, it was like they were like Comcast. You know, nobody likes Comcast. Nobody likes a monopoly that screws their customers. So they were just like, yeah, it's our way or the highway. I mean, like, they could have asked for anything. They could have asked for a thousand caps on top of that, and I would have had to go along with it. Like, they really, they were asking for too little. Because I'll tell you what I did after they unencrypted the chip. I shot them all in the head. And that was, that was, uh, <laughs> that was probably one of the most satisfying things I did in Fallout 4. I hated these guys so instantly and so much. Like, I've never done this in a Fallout game. I have never instantly resorted to murder, uh, for, for NPCs before. Like, I usually hear them out and follow along their quest line, see if it's worth doing anything. But I hated these guys so quickly. Like, I gave their programmer a chip and he's like, oh, I'm hacking now. Whoa, oh, I got a memory hiccup. Whoa, guys, whoa, whoa, I'm typing in the password. Oh my God, no, that password didn't work. I'm typing in another password. Oh, this file's encrypted. Luckily, we got this encryption thing. So he's like, <laughs> he's like cracking the code by the seat of his pants. It's not like they had the software on hand or I don't know kind of they did but but not really which made me just think that the only reason I had to take it to this guy was because the story said I did to introduce me to this stupid faction that I really hated already and uh, and so you know, like I could have taken to the Brotherhood of Steel. I bet they had code crackers I bet they could have unencrypted the file and they wanted to kill the Institute just as much as I didn't care about the Institute. So, uh, so yeah, so, like, I was just really, like, unimpressed with, like, I mean, like, these, this is a video game. Like, you people code things for a living. Like, you actually make programs. So, there, I just didn't understand, like, how you get this, like, stupid, like, 90s era programming, like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm logging into the mainframe, I'm hacking into the databases, I'm using the SQLs, and, you know, it's just sort of like, what, what are you talking about? Like, what are you doing? Just... Can you unencrypt the files or not? Like, you must have a key, right? You know, there's there's got to be a way. They just, <laughs> geez, you don't just do it all by the seat of your pants. But anyway, though, so they're like, there, we unencrypted the data. Here's your data. And I was like, thanks. And so I just shot them in the head with a shotgun and then wiped out everyone down there, including this robot called the Pam. Like, I noticed that it wasn't hostile. It was just running around. And so I was like, ah, nap, come here, come here, come here. There will be no survivors for the Underground Railroad. So I just shot everything, killed everybody, and no regrets. No regrets whatsoever. Felt much better. It was, it was like watching the Church of Adam die. Like, I was really glad when they all died. I was like, man, I really hate this game. I'm really starting to hate this game. Uh, I really hate the factions in this game. I really just want everyone in this game to be dead. So um, that was when I decided, like, if there's a way for me to kill every faction in Fallout 4, I'm going to do it. That was when my quest began. My true personal goal was uh, I'm just going to kill everyone and everything in Fallout 4. I don't care anymore about anyone's idiotic personal motives or, or any of the stupid things that anyone has to say to me. I'm just going to wipe out every power in the game as well as I can. So 
Uh, yeah, I went back and I, I did some stuff for the Brotherhood, you know, uh, they made me go clear out a couple of dungeons for them, you know, it was really not very consequential stuff, it wasn't very meaningful, it didn't come back and have any impact or whatever, and then they were like, alright buddy, now for the settlement phase of the game, we need you to build, and so this is where I learned about settlements, is they were like, yeah, we need you out of like, a bunch of desk fans and some ceramic bowls, we need you to build this teleporter. I was just like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> You're a military organization and you just want me to go out and scavenge for parts and then come back and build this experimental teleporter? What? And they were like, yeah, that's how this is going to work. And so that's what I did. Uh, I went around like I didn't have ceramic. That was my, my big bottleneck. So I had to like go from dungeon to dungeon to dungeon until finally I found like a tea set in one of the dungeons, and I was like, oh, this is all ceramic. So I grabbed a bunch of tea sets. I think ashtrays also would have worked, but I didn't realize that, because, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, it was like, I was just like, oh, ceramic teapot. I was like, ah, oh, ceramic, there it is. Uh. And you can hit Q to tell it, like, help me find things. But uh, but I'd hit that on enough things already that I was getting confused. Like, everything had a, <laughs> everything had a magnifying glass next to it already. So I didn't know what was what as it was. Um, you know, and there's no way to turn off that magnifying glass, as far as I could tell. Unless you like find an item and you're like, oh, I'm already stocked up on this But I kind of wanted to like, you know, I, I want the screws. Don't ever stop telling me where screws are It doesn't matter that I already have screws. Just keep telling me I need screws. So um, Yeah, so it was just like I collected up a bunch of desk fans and a ceramic teapot set and I came back and out of these ceramic teapots I guess I built the teleporter a <laughs> teleporter and so um, you know like I built this teleporter and they're like All right, we don't know what's gonna happen and um the leader of the Brotherhood of Steel, he's like, all right, listen very carefully. And I was like, and I was thinking to myself, like, all right, I'm going to focus on what he has to say because he's like, he's like, I'm only going to tell you once and then you're going to be cut off. And I'm like, okay. And I don't know what he said. I didn't skip through his dialogue, but he was so boring. His speech was so boring that I started to think about other things while he was talking. And then like, it was, it was kind of almost like a comical thing. It was like, had I been doing that let's play, it would have been like, all right, I'm listening. You know, all right, go. I didn't hear a word of that. <laughs> like, I was thinking about dinner. And, uh, you know, like, uh, so so he told me, like, some stuff. He's like, da 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 something, something about, like, I think he had a spy on the inside of the Institute, in which case, you know, I don't know why he needed me or why we didn't already have a way in. But, uh, you know, this is a spy on the Institute. He's like, keep an eye out for that spy. You got to infiltrate the Institute. And I was like, all right, infiltration. Got it. Got it. So I get into the Institute. And, uh, and no, I, you just, like, they know that you're there, and so they talk to you over the radio, and they're like, hello, welcome to the Institute. Like, you may have heard a lot of things about us, but let me tell you that our program to, like, kill and eradicate, like, to kill and replace humans is totally benign and awesome, and you should trust us. So, like, I'm just going through this, you know, like, like, oh, look at all this, like, iPod shiny, like, white lab stuff, which I'm thinking is, is really just goes against the grain of the whole atomic age uh sci-fi you know it's, it's not that's like high end that's like modern modern sci-fi more uh so you know i'm just kind of like okay all right yeah yeah modern sci-fi you know we're, we're breaking the uh the theme of the game okay yeah okay 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 and so finally i get to the room with like sean in it the uh the sean and a lot of people already know this but sean is actually not your son he's an institute android or whatever so um so i'm just like hey sean hey sean and none of my options were really sensical because like they're all just like oh my god sean i'm so happy to see you like oh god sean like sean calm down calm down sean i'm your dad sean and um it was all really frustrating because i feel like had that been me in my situation like if i were in that situation uh i would i i feel like introductions would have been order for the first thing i'd have been like uh hello hello like excuse me like you don't recognize me but i'm I'm actually your father, like your real, your real, like biological father. Like, I don't know you, but I mean, the kid had every right to be terrified of me. I mean, most kidnappings are conducted by uh, biological parents. So, so anyway, though, I was there to kidnap my son and, uh, and he was just like, oh, father, come help me, come help me. And so the door slides open and I just shoot the man that walks through the door in the head because uh, by now I'm already committed to just murdering everything. And like, I already kind of knew the twist that um, the father of the Institute was actually uh, father or the leader of the Institute, you know, he was, he was, he was Sean. He was actually Sean, just all grown up. So the door opens up and I just shot him in the head and he just falls over and he dies in that one shot. And I thought, huh, 
That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And then the alarms go off, and it's like, oh, mission failed, fission mailed, fis mission failed. Like, oh, you're so stupid. You were supposed to infiltrate. And I'm like, well, here I am. <laughs> like, I'm in. And, and I thought for sure I was going to get to go around the Institute and just kill everybody. It's what I was going to do. And, uh, but then all the doors were locked, and not just locked, but inaccessible. So there was nothing more that I could do. And, uh, and then Sean, my android st son, just stops functioning. He, like, powers down. So there's actually no closure on the whole Sean thing. If you shoot father the minute he walks in the door, like, the game just forgets the finding your son angle. It's no longer a thing. Like, no one explains that that wasn't Sean, like nothing, it just doesn't wrap up. It's just a loose end that stays there. So I leave the Institute with this giant loose end and I never again bring up my son, except for at the very end. Uh, one thing that, like basically what they make me do then is I have to go into settlement building and I have to rebuild Liberty Prime in the settlement building menu. And, uh, and like it was one of those things, like it's like a big sigh and roll of the eyes when they're like, yeah, we need you to build Liberty, Pri Liberty Prime's leg actuators now. And it's just like, oh, are you kidding? Like, you really want me to go get another teapot from the wasteland and use it to build a war machine? Like, is this even feasible? Like, shouldn't there be some kind of, I, I don't know, place where you machine parts? Like, what are you doing? God. Okay, fine. So I helped him build Liberty Prime. And then Liberty Prime, being invincible, uh, he walked down to the Institute, and it had even less impact than when they did it in Fallout 3. Like, in Fallout 3, it was it was kind of, uh, it felt like a big moment, like he'd been working up to this. You know, there'd been a lot going on in Fallout 3. However you feel about Fallout 3, at least the Liberty Prime moment felt like a climax. For this game, it just felt like a, like a chore. Like, I was, like, taking Liberty Prime for a walk, you know, because he had to go on a walk. Like, it's kind of a cold day, I sort of want to hurry up and get inside, but, you know, we got to get some exercise for Liberty Prime. Slippery Prime stomps around town, and every time something gets in the way, he vaporizes it. So it's kind of like, I barely had time or opportunity to participate in anything that Liberty Prime was doing. Um, and so then he like blasts a hole in the Institute. So you all, you all run down there with a bunch of soldiers cramping your style, making it impossible to sneak or do anything aside of, besides a frontal assault. And um, I found my way to the generator and I blew it up. And that was it. Like, I was treated to a great big cutscene, you know, like, oh, boom, boom, the Institute's gone. And uh, I was just like, all right, great. So uh, the Brotherhood of Steel is still alive. That's a problem. That's a problem. Not happy with this. Uh, you know, I, I actually didn't hate the Brotherhood of Steel. Of all the factions, they were one of the less stupid. Um, they did send me to go kill Dance because it turned out he was a synth. And a lot of people apparently grappled with this. They were like, oh, I'm emotionally invested. But I was like, eh, okay. So I just like went down and I just shot him in the head and uh, and like didn't even talk to him. So, um, you know, I didn't need to know. Whatever. Whatever he was going to tell me, it was probably a Fallout 4 style of writing. So it was probably going to be stupid. Uh, so I, I didn't care. Didn't care. Didn't care. So, uh, yeah, so I went back to, to uh, help the Minutemen because it turns out that... Uh, if you help the Minutemen, they can actually send you on a quest to kill the Brotherhood of Steel. Only problem being that you've got to kill, uh, you've got to make the Brotherhood of Steel hostile in the first place. So I shot at the Brotherhood of Steel members while I was on the Pridwin. They're like, congratulations, you're now like the highest ranking whatever. You're like above Paladin now. I can't remember what they made me. But I was like, that's great. And so I just like went outside and I just sh I just mowed down a bunch, of their, a bunch of their soldiers and then left. And it was like, you are now enemies with the Brotherhood of Steel. So, um, so, uh, you know, I was enemy number one at that point. They were probably, I mean, like, realistically, they'd probably all be like, geez, what happened? Uh, so, anyway, so I went to go back to talk to the Minutemen who'd been doing nothing. They'd been sitting on their asses the entire time I'd been doing all this stuff. And they were like, yeah, um, for us to advance the game, the, the game quests, you need to do all these Radiant quests. And uh, this is where I got really irritated because, like, all the Radiant quests that you have to do, like... Like, they made me go help the same settlement twice, both times in the name of rallying more people under our banner. And it was really kind of annoying, because they were like, yeah, go to this one farmstead and then help them out. And I was like, okay. And I did that, and I came back, and they were like, yeah, go to this one farmstead and help them out. And it was the same farmstead. So I was like, well, <laughs> like, how are we gathering more people under our banner if I'm helping the same people over and over again? Like, I just cleared out all the raiders that were bothering them. Like, do you want me to just sweep the entire, uh, of Boston? The entirety of Boston? Like, I could. No one could stop me. It would take a while, but I could do it. And, and they were just like, no, no, no. Uh, okay, so you help them again. All right, now go help these other guys. And so I just had to do these radiant quests until I'd helped enough settlements 
uh, or had built enough settlements that the game was willing to say like, all right, it's ready. Now it's time to advance. So we go down to this, um, this like fort and there's a giant mire lurk that we have to fight. And that was kind of neat. I mean, it was actually really tedious though. Uh, I would have liked it a lot better if they didn't have all the tiny, uh, the tiny mire lurks because the tiny mire lurks, they felt like they had a weird hitbox. I had a really hard time shooting them outside of vats. Um, like I would point the gun at them and I would fire and it seemed like a 50% chance that I would actually hit them even if the rectacle was right over them and they were right in my face. And the other thing that they would do is they would jump. So they were just a huge pain in the ass, like these tiny little Mirelurks. They did like no damage, but they would, uh, you know, stun you a little bit and do a little bit of radiation damage. So they were just incredibly tedious to deal with. It was like I really would have been, I would have preferred to just be shooting the giant Mirelurk. These tiny Mirelurks were frustrating. Or at least send the normal like sized Mirelurks at me. Don't, don't send these little like hard to shoot. You know, these stupid things. Especially not in Fallout Fallout 4. One other thing that frustrated me about Fallout 4 was that I noticed that they really hadn't fixed the physics in the game. Like, I was still constantly seeing enemies making really rapid um, vector changes, you know. Like, like when they're looking for you because uh, you're hiding, they'll, like, duck down behind a bench and then immediately, like, move. And they move so fast, like, they will change directions instantly. And there's like no transfer of momentum. There's no like natural flow of movement or anything like that. Like they don't like gradually cancel out their inertia and then move somewhere else. And that was worst of all with bugs because the bugs are flying. And so they would just come at you and they would make like 90 degree turns and they were just impossible to track outside of vats. The only way you could kill them would be to backpedal and then make the bugs follow you in a straight line, at which point you could shoot them so long as the bug didn't think to navigate around some kind of obstacle on the ground. Because technically they're not flying, they're actually just, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, the fact that there's, there's not really very good physics uh, for the enemies kind of made it even worse. And, and yeah, yeah, but eventually I, I cleared out this thing. And uh, I had to do a bunch more Radiant quests, of course, and so that was starting to get really old, because they were just like, yeah, more Radiant quests, do more things. And I noticed it was like, I was getting these tips, like, oh, your, your people will be more happy and more productive if you help them, if you build things that they want. And I thought to myself, like, more productive at what? Like, what do they do? And then later on, I realized that what they were doing is they were taking the workbenches and then stuffing them full of crap, you know, junk. And so I was like, oh, uh, okay, uh, great. Great. I, I mean, I don't really care because all I can use the junk for is to build more settlements. So it's kind of like I don't really, you know, I, this is just kind of for its own sake, but all right. Yeah, fine. So, um, yeah, that, that's what they were doing. And, uh, and so finally we get to this thing where they're like, all right, so we need to go and we need to get inside the armory. And I was like, oh, why was that not priority number one? Like, why was that not the first thing that we did? And they're like, don't worry about it. But anyway, there's a ton of rubble, rub there's a ton of rubble here that we need to clear out. And I was like, oh, so how do we do that? Like, do you need me to go get some dynamite? Like there was a quarry that I saw. Do we go down the quarry? Like there's probably dynamite there. And they're like, no, 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 no. Go into the workbench and then just scrap the material. And I, and I was like, what? what? Like this feels like we're just exploiting game logic now. You can't tell me that the tunnel to the armory is collapsed. So I need to go into the workbench menu and then scrap the rubble. But that was what I did. So I scrapped the rubble in the tunnel and then that was it. Like the tunnel was open and I was like, oh, all right. Well, how come no one else could do what? Okay. All right. So I went in there and it turns out that they just had like a bunch of artillery making uh, scrap in there. And they were like, all right, so now we're going to build a bunch of mortars. And I was like, okay, all right. And they were like, yeah, and once you build five mortars, we'll be able to attack the Pridwin. And I was like, all right. Yeah. Okay. Mortars. Sure. We're going to fire some artillery at the Brotherhood of Steel. That'll soften them up, I suppose. And, uh, and so I built all the, I built all the mortars at first, not realizing that the material that was in the, in the armory was actually for the mortars. I didn't really look very closely at the armory cause it was like a bunch of parts for, uh, the laser muskets, which I wasn't using. So I was just like, Oh, all right. My, uh, oh, and some mines and uh, some artillery things. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, like, I think they made you grab some of that, but whatever, whatever reason, it just didn't, uh, didn't register in my head. I wasn't thinking about it. So I was like, oh, okay. So uh, for a while, I was just like trying to collect junk to build these artillery. And then after a while, I checked in on the armory and I was like, oh, all the material was here. I'm wasting my time. So, um, yes, uh, uh, I went around and I built five mortars and I was like, all right, guys. So now begins the part where I like, what do I do? Am I going to go storm the Pridwin? I'm going to like plant... Uh, a flare on the Pridwin? Like, what am I doing? Like, there's got to be some kind of big climactic thing, right? And they were just like, 
yeah, uh, get a get a targeting solution on the Pridwin. And so they just like rotate the, the artillery to face the Pridwin. And they're like, all right, fire for effect. Boom, blows up the Pridwin, just like that. And I thought to myself like, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you just you just like build artillery and then just blow up the, Prid the Pridwin with it? Like, that's it? That's it? That's the whole thing? And, uh, and, and it kind of like, you know, as it was, the Pridwin was parked within, like, sniper distance of a lot of places. You know, there, there was a lot of, like, there were, like, fat man range, you know. You could probably fire a fat man at it from a lot of places. Like, if the Pridwin was vulnerable to artillery shells, it was vulnerable to a lot of things. And, and I was just thinking about that. I was like, so, they parked their airship within artillery range of the entire city. And nobody... In the Brotherhood of Steel thought this was a tactical mistake. This isn't like one of these things where like, oh, Lu Bei camps in the woods during the dry season and gets caught in a fire. This is like, you know, that, that was an honest mistake. That's a thing where you're like, oh, okay. This is like setting up your camp within arrow range of the enemy, you know, just, just being like, yeah, they could fire straight down at us from here. So here's where we are, you know, downhill, bottom of a ravine with the enemy camped up above us, you know, with their, with their air, like, why were they why were they within artillery range of me? Like why was this so easy? I don't understand. Like this is this is like they'd taken years and years to build the Pridwin. Like how were they so irresponsible with it? Like I, I thought that the Brotherhood of Steel was supposed to be incredibly cautious. You know, there aren't that many of them. So yeah, just like that, just blew them all up because they were within artillery range. And so it was like a complete no-brainer. Like they were so vulnerable. And and so then they had this big thing where they were like, oh, now everyone, now everyone from the Brotherhood of Steel is going to come to the castle and attack you. And then this was just a tedious battle sequence because they just came wave after wave after wave of Brotherhood of Steel member, but I had so much ammo and so many stim packs. And at least two of the, of the guys on my team were immortal. They couldn't be killed. So, like, the, the vertebrates also are just a pain in the ass. Like, I'd heard people compare them to Skyrim dragons. And uh, I really didn't get that comparison until I started having the dumb things buzz around my head all throughout the game. Like, I would go somewhere, and a vertebrate would come in, and I'd be like, all right, everyone drop everything while we battle the vertebrate. And, uh, you know, vertebrate battles were tedious. I hated fighting vertebrates. So, um, so yeah, they were just like, here's a bunch of vertebrates. Here's, like, just tons of these stupid things. And we're airdropping Brotherhood of Steel members in. And I just thought, like, how do you have, like, 30 vertebrates? after losing the the staging platform you were using to launch them. Like, where did these all come from? You know, so so all these vertebrates just fly in. They start dropping Brotherhood of Steel members. And you just fight them and you fight them and you fight them until eventually the game is like, okay, you're done. You know, that's enough. 100% defended. You know, and so then you talk to the, the guys and they're like, good work. Brotherhood of Steel's dead. And that was it. Game over. I killed every faction, and I'm pretty sure that I've, I've basically played the whole game. There's nothing for me. There's nothing more for me to see or do. I had all the late game equipment that I could want. I mean, like, yeah, maybe there's some legendary equipment out there, but who cares? Um, I honestly can't think of any way that you could salvage the game. Like, for what little there was, and for how little meat there. Like, it was just, it was just like bone. You know, it's like there could be the potential to be a good game on there. But you would need more than modders to fix it. It, it just like wasn't really uh, a nutritious meal, if you want to put it like that. There was no meat in Fallout 4 whatsoever. So that was it. I got to the end of Fallout 4. It was all so ludicrously stupid. I was so glad I killed everyone. And I would kill the Minutemen too if the game would let me. But unfortunately, they are immortal. So, you know, that's how it was. Uh, Fallout 4... Pretty big disappointment. Way bigger of a disappointment than I gave it credit for when I first started playing. I didn't think that I would be less happy with it the further I went in, but that was actually the case. So, um, so yeah, uh, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I'll catch you all next time.